Hi, I'm Rich Tabor of Cornell Cooperative Extension of Shenango County, New York, and we're here today at Tiger Lily Farm in Oxford, New York, owned by John Marshman and family. And with us is Dave Balbian, the area dairy specialist for Cooperative Extension. And we're looking at some of the many details uh, to consider in dairy cow comfort here today uh, with respect to freestall, uh, freestall barns. I'm going to ask John actually to kind of tell us a little bit about some of the history here uh, of their decision to uh, put the stalls in that they have and tell us what he has and kind of some of his experiences. And then we're going to we're going to take a look at some of these stalls and, uh, and the stall surface, the comfort it provides, and some of the features these these stalls have. So, John. Okay, this <laughs> barn here was built uh, 20 years ago and originally had plank stalls. And over the years, we've kept uh, looking for a solution for better cow comfort. And uh, about 10 years ago, we moved to water beds, which were new at the time. And over time, we have uh, outfitted all our, our milking and dry cow facility with water beds. Um, so that's what the cows are laying on. And uh, we've been quite happy with them. Most We have started to replace the first group um, partly because now they have a two-chamber system we think is a little more comfortable, but the uh, the durability and, and the comfort for the cows has been better than any other mattress product that we'd had in here previous or the original plank system. Um, other than that, we've started to focus on opening up the stalls, especially the front part of the stalls, to give the cows more lunch room. And as the We've gotten a bigger animal here over the years, trying to make sure that they have the room they need. I'm gonna step into the stall here. You can see how these uh, surfaces move around here. Basically, it's filled with water, just like a, like a water mattress uh, in your house. Uh, so it provides a lot of cushion to the cows. When the cow lays down on them, the, the water spreads out underneath her and kind of lifts her up. There isn't a lot of need for bedding as a comfort factor. The need for the bedding is really to keep the back edge of the stall dry, especially when the cows step up on them and step off them. We absorb it more the, than anything yeah, else. That's, yeah, that's that's really sure. the issue. Tell us a little bit about uh, about uh, what's some changes that that have occurred here. Uh, the front of the stall here has got a PVC pipe to kind of position the cows. It used to have a like a brisket board there. That's a change that you made. And tell us a little bit about why you did that and how how this has worked. Um, okay, so. Um, We've tried to increase the ability for the cow, especially the front end of the cow, to be able to get up and down, end on her, down on her own, have enough room to do that, and be unobstructed when she's laying there chewing her cud. So we used to have brisket boards, which were the common thread throughout the 80s and 90s, that, that were there to try and keep the cow from going through the, through, or getting too far and, forward. And you still have some in one section here and yeah stuff. we well, have one section that we have not converted yet but all the other stalls are converted by using this pvc pipe um that lowers lowers it down to just so that it doesn't obstruct the cow and gives her more room to to lay there in a comfortable space okay we're on the other side of the barn here where there's been some some remodeling here and and uh these uh these mattresses here these these water mattresses are the dual chamber mattresses and i'm going to step up in here and i don't know if you'll be able to see this or not uh but basically uh, there's a section in the back and then a section in the front and there's no question about it that uh they're i guess i would say they're a lot more supportive the water doesn't have an opportunity to move as far away from the pressure point in the stall uh, the other thing is that uh Things are a lot more open here. I'm going to have John uh, tell us a little bit about uh, everything that they did here and stuff to open this up and what his experience has been with the cows. There's just, what, five stalls on each side here that are totally changed over uh, with this open design here. But the plan is to do the whole, do the whole side here. So, so tell us what you've seen here since you've, you've done this here. Okay, so this is the group that has the biggest cows in them. So obviously this is where we started opening stalls up. And uh, you'll see that um, we took out the bottom bar and you'll see how, how we put in a, a post that anchors it directly to the floor. And that allows us to open everything up so all the cow sees is, is from one side to the other. It's just the PVC pipe, which kind of helps her decide where to lay with her front end. And uh, the other issue is, is to, keep, to keep the uh, neck rail at the proper height and uh, to keep that up high so they got lots of room to be able to lunge to get up and get down. 
and uh, we are planning this winter we'll end up uh, redoing this whole group we'll get done like and then we'll start moving through the barn now, now these stalls this barn was built like i said 20 years ago 20 years ago these stalls here these head-to-head -head stalls do you know what the total length these is here 14 feet 14 feet okay so seven feet on the side and they have to right. share to share headroom the outside okay. stalls we're going to tip the curtain out is eight feet um, but that's a hard eight feet they can't get any farther yeah. than that so, so by today's standards this is uh is shorter than what we'd be building today yeah. so normally, so the value to opening things up in this in this barn here is even greater really to get yeah, i think normally space. it'd be a 15 foot head to head right right and either a nine or a 10 foot outside right so and, and i know i know some short fo yeah. a foot in each thing. yeah and i know some folks are even going a little more than 15 yeah. to provide that extra space but yeah 15 is kind of the standard we have good width today, here yeah. these are 48 inch stalls so um if you go down to a 47 or 46, then you need a little even more length. Yeah, yeah. One of, one of the things I wanted to talk about, especially uh, critical for freestall barns, is uh, resting time, how much time cows have to rest. And there's been a lot of work uh, looking at uh, what's called resting requirements. And uh, a lot of the work would suggest that we ought to be shooting for, say, 12 hours a day. Uh, maybe even a little bit more might be better for some of our really high producing cows. And uh, we were discussing that a little bit in the away from uh, away from the barn parlor holding area time is what a maximum of an hour and 15 minutes. Three, yeah, three, three times, times a, day. a day. So it ends up being about um, four hours a day as far as away from their from their groups. And then obviously yeah, they're eating time and um, right, right. and that type of stuff. But still, that's pretty reasonable. So most of these cows should be in pretty good shape as far as their quote resting requirements. Uh, you get down in below those areas, down into seven, eight, nine hours uh, per day. Uh, for the most part, general rule of thumb is that every hour a cow is short, there's about two, uh, two pounds of milk per cow per day that's being lost for that hour shortfall. So that's kind of a just a rough rule of thumb during that period of time. We're over here in uh, Otsego County in Richville Springs, New York, on Tim Cantwell's farm. And we're gonna have Dave, uh, uh, ask him some questions about his version of cow comfort in a freestall dairy. One of the things that this farm features is uh, deep sand uh, bedded stalls and uh, I'm going to have Tim tell you a little bit of uh, you, you've you've had this barn in operation for what 13 years 12-13 yeah, years? Up on years and uh, hmm. so anyway I guess I, I want you to tell us a little bit of of your impression of of this system and how it's worked for you from a standpoint of cow health and um, footing and all of those kinds of things cow comfort uh let, let us know what you think um well when we had the fire in 2000 we had to rebuild and uh we decided to go with uh sand bedding and, and we've been very pleased with it it's tremendous for cow comfort cow comfort and uh and uh it's just been you know the main thing is is there's no concrete under the cow it's just deep sand and that eliminates a lot of leg injuries and uh especially with high producing cows that they can get up and get down without injuring themselves and uh, so we've been very pleased with it but of course we don't have a we don't have a liquid manure system we are on daily spread so that elim eliminates some of the um, you know negative manure things. handling issues and stuff that yes. go along with it yeah yes. yeah and I guess the, what's the one thing I forgot to mention I mean you, you moved into this facility here after a fire destroyed your old tie stall barn and and you uh, basically switched systems to a freestall barn and this is the, the route that you went uh, the the other thing tell us your impression as well I mean um, you hear people talk about not only the uh, the footing and the comfort the cows get but uh, some of the benefits maybe from a standpoint of minimizing mastitis with with sand versus other bedding sources well we we, we had mattresses in the old barn and we uh and we bedded with uh then we used a little bit of sawdust on there for yep. cleanliness and i would i would say and i would say with the sand beds and a freestyle barn our utter health is, is is better and certainly legs and feet are much healthier on the cows I, I mean the one the one thing about sand is that it's inorganic so there's no organic matter there and it's not to say that you're not going to have any mastitis problems because if you have cows you're going to have some mastitis problems uh, but the fact that it's it's inorganic it, it's uh, just a little tougher medium for the bugs to really get growing and, and uh, getting things started there so uh, a lot of benefits from that standpoint as well so Yes. All and, right. And uh, what what we like about it, and I'll tell you, really economics is uh, we can buy sand much cheaper than sawdust. 
Oh, okay, yeah. I mean, the, the economics now, sawdust has become yeah. hay, have, have, have become very expensive items to purchase yeah. if you don't grow them on farm or you have them I on mean, farm. I mean, 30, 40 years ago, sawdust was readily available. They would give it to you, just come and take it, and that's certainly changed a lot. Uh, it's being used for pellets and other types of uh, sources of energy and other uses and stuff. So, uh, so, yeah, pretty tough to get, and it's expensive. So not only is it the gold standard, it's 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 relatively inexpensive as bedding materials yeah. go. And, and you're right. I mean, that's it's it's kind of the, uh, um, you call it the gold standard. I guess that's what a lot of people say, and it, it really is the gold standard as far as cow comfort in freestyle facilities. There's no question about it. I always kind of tell people, it's like laying on the beach every day. How can you beat it? It's pretty darn good for the cows, pretty right. nice. So, These are the beds. You can see how easy it is to move the sand around here. And uh, geez, these, uh, this sand is probably, what, 10 inches deep maybe, eight to 10 inches deep? Or at least that. At, at least, least, least that, that. yeah. At and boy, that. I mean, cows just get footing and it's, uh, it's pretty hard to beat. Plus they, uh, they uh, uh, when they leave the stalls here, oftentimes there's a little bit of sand that gets carried out onto the floor here. Uh, it helps them get some good traction. Plus, tell us about, uh, you've also grooved the floors here, which really makes a difference as well. Right, of course, we groove the floors. The biggest thing with your grooving is you want, you know, wide, good wide grooves. That's the main thing so that they don't freeze up and, and fill up. Uh, here on the stalls, we've got a eight inch or six inch curb here. And then from here back is uh, just a gravel base and then filled with sand. Filled with sand, okay. So really the only concrete we have here is in the scrape alley and these two concrete curbs here to, you know, hold your sand in. And, and this, uh, I mean, a lot of people kind of, I don't know, I guess normally kind of assume that in a freestall barn you're going to have a, a, a higher call rate or at least as high a call rate as you would in a tie stall barn, but uh, that's not been the case for you here. I mean, your call rate runs what, uh, typically? Typically we run, you know, any, 21, 22, 23%. So. Okay, all right. I mean, those are pretty good numbers. I mean, you think about industry-wide here, we're pretty typically talking about, say, a 35% call rate is pretty standard uh, in upstate New York here. So uh, this really, uh, well, you, you certainly add to cow longevity, allows you to uh, increase herd size from internal herd growth or maybe even market uh, uh, more heifers for dairy or, or whatever. So, uh, so that's a real plus.